Hi, internet friends. I'm here with my friend Azalea, and um, you're a teacher here in Napa. Yes. Spanish and Spanish studies? Uh, Spanish literature and IP language and culture. Mm. And we've known each other now for a few years. For a few years, I yes. love that. And, yeah, me too. Uh, you're one of the best things about Napa for me, that's what you oh, don't know. Oh, thank you so much. You are too. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the most interesting things about you, though, is you're from Sinaloa. Yes. And we don't know much about that. I mean, a lot of immigrants don't come from there. Here in Napa, they tend to be from Michoacan and Jalisco yes, and Oaxaca Zacate now. Yes, and Zacatecas. And yes. Exactly. But not from the Northwest. Nothing. Yes. And it's an unusual place. Uh, I think a lot of times it gets the short shrift when people talk about food in particular. Yes. And yet you were just saying it's land, it's sea, it's... Yes. Yes. Cielo, mar y tierra. Cielo, mar, mar y, y tierra. tierra. Yes. So the sky, the ocean, and the yes. land. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Very, very good food. Um, obviously, I'm in love with bean dishes. And what are the beans that you would eat in that region more than others? Uh, Canadio beans. Mm -hmm. And... Um, White beans. White beans, and yes. that's kind of rare in Mexico. Very, yeah, very, very small. I remember growing up uh, eating, yes, that type, and uh, never black beans. No, sure. That's interesting. Yeah. Did you call them alubias, the white, or no? No, but no, because the alubias are a little larger. Oh, interesting. Yes, yeah. these are very, very tiny uh, white beans. Never and what we grow is Mayacoba, you would eat and use as uh, for your canario, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, yes, instead of the canario, because I have not been able to find that. You know, sure. Good, but the Mayakova has the, the flavor okay. that, that we're looking for. That's yes. great. Mm -hmm. And today, what are we going to make? We're going to make uh, frijoles puercos. And it's completely different than frijol con puerco in the Yucatan. Exactly. Completely yes. different. Yes. And it's actually, it seems like it's a real mixed uh, culture dish. It's like a mestizo dish. Yeah. Because it has the beans, but then it has uh, olives. Which is so unusual. Yeah. Right? And it has cheese. And it has every, it's a recipe like I think of the uh, medieval um, romances that uh, they were never written, they were, mm. you know, past. And everybody has a different recipe sure. and adds uh, another uh, element, but they're all good. And is this one that was in your family for a while? Uh, yeah, it was in my family and it's a dish that uh, it's served uh, mostly in um, holidays or weddings, you know, baptisms and it's a very common to, to find it. So is it a special event dish? Or is uh, it yeah, it is a special event. It's not something that you eat every day. Okay. Would you eat plain beans normally? Oh, yeah, every day. Okay. Yeah. Every day. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go in the kitchen and we'll make okay. something. Oh, All sure. right. I'm let's in go. the kitchen of uh, Steve Sando from Rancho Gordo, and we're going to make today frijoles puercos, which is a dish, a dish from uh, Sinaloa. Uh, this is the recipe from my family, but there's many, many recipes in the one you can invent. Uh, the first thing we are doing is putting the, uh, the lard, pork lard. We're going to add the chorizo. And uh, we're trying to use uh, ingredients, local ingredients. That of course, it will not be the same, but it will be very close to, our, uh, to what we are used to. Like I said before, this is a dish that it's mostly prepared for uh, weddings, for any, any kind of celebration. So finish with the chorizo. The chorizo really needs to fry for a little while. And uh, we're going to add the beans. In the meantime, I'm going to show you, these are, these are the beans, the way they were uh, cooked, yes, with water and salt for about um, an hour and a half and they were not soaked. These are beans, of course, from Rancho Gordo, the best quality. And after that, uh, they were passed through the uh, blender with a consistency uh, not completely liquid, but some, somehow uh, soft. And uh, people has different recipes, like I was saying. Some people adds to the uh, chorizo uh, bacon some people add uh, butter, but in my family we only use the lard and the, uh, and the chorizo. And interesting enough, some people uh, add even tuna, which I don't really care for, but some people do. It's a dish that you just have to, uh, there's really uh, not uh, quantities or ingredients, it's one of those things that you need to to figure out as you are cooking uh, how much of, 
of uh, each ingredient you're going to, to add. Okay, now I'm going to continue adding ingredients. I'm going to add the chile jalapeño, the pickled ch uh, chile jalapeño with, uh, with uh, the juices. And then in a few minutes, I'm going to add the uh, olives and uh, cut them in half. And we like the olives that have the, the chile morrón inside, which is the, uh, the pimiento morrón. And I'm going to start adding the cheese. For the cheese, uh, we use the cheese uh, that is called queso de chihuahua that is made actually in the state of Chihuahua by the Menonitas. So it's a cheese that, that you find it in Sonora and in Sinaloa. But here, you know, it's very difficult to find. So what I use, you can use either uh, Monterrey Jack in this case, I selected Fontina because Fontina, it has a very nice uh, consistency like the queso de, de Chihuahua. Some, somehow they're, uh, they're similar. So the last touch for this dish is the uh, guacamaya sauce, which is also from Sinaloa. And it's been around for a long, long time. Uh, this uh, salsa was made in a town uh, called Bachigualato, which the airport is very close by. And uh, it's, a, it's a salsa that is very good for seafood, for fruit, and of course uh, for, this, uh, for these beans. It's the, the last touch. They're almost ready. I'm just going to, let's say about five minutes, I'm just going to stir them. And, uh, and they will be ready to serve. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. I hope you like them. <laughs> I think it's safe. <laughs>